it was a, 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 a informal um, a gathering, and um, um, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, I haven't been saved all my life, so uh, it was during a, 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 a time that I was incarcerated. And so, so somehow, some way, um, God started leading me to minister to men, and so that's that was the start. You know, I would go out to the yard and sit there, and men would come up, and I would begin to minister to them according to the Word of God. It, 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 not at the time, you know, because you didn't even look at it as okay, you're you're a public speaker, you know. It was just I just was doing what I felt led to do. So 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 it came natural. The 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 nervousness uh, in in public speaking came when I knew <laughs> that I am speaking to the public. You know, there was that consciousness that okay, hey, you are speaking to the public, and so now you know. Then there's some anxiety. Uh, uh, you know, not bad. You know, you after you know the first three to five minutes, you know, you kind of you know make that transition into where you know you're you know just really focus on you know what your message is. You know, so now I am not that brilliant. So, so I'm kind of slow. So, so, so God, uh, so I gets up at, uh, well, let me say this throughout the weekday, you know, I get bits and pieces of what I feel like God wants me to share with the congregation. And so, so, so I have little notes all over my office at the house. And then at two o'clock on Sunday morning, I get up and then God, you know, we spend the next, you know, four or five hours putting those pieces in the right place. And so so that's my preparation for, and that has been my preparation for probably the last uh, 13 years. I, I do, but it, it never, I can never preach I could teach like I practice, but I could never preach like I practice. <laughs> so, and I don't know why, but I, 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 but I'm working on it. I'm working on. I'm getting closer. I, I do, I do. I'm not a extemporaneous uh, speaker, so I have to have my manuscript. And so, so you know, basically, it's it's ba basic outline, introduction. You know, uh, then uh, maybe three points, and then and then the closing. Uh, Jim Walton, uh, uh, he's a former city manager. I mean, just a, a, a very disciplined public speaker, very disciplined. Um, uh, uh, Mr. Harold Moss, uh, Mr. Lyle Quasim, and uh, and, uh, pastors, I probably would say uh, uh, Pastor Banks. He's he. Uh, there's a term uh, that we use uh, for preachers that know how to manipulate a manuscript, and Pastor Banks has perfected that. And so, uh, 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 eating a manuscript, oh. you know. So I mean, you ate it, and so once you have digested it, there's a flow with it, you know. And so, um, and so, um, trying to think of uh, so there are several pastors that I really admire. You know, if if I had to go with the uh, some of those that are more uh, well known, uh, I I like T D Jake style. Mm -hmm. I like uh, Cleflo Dollar. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and I like Charles Stanley. T D Jakes, which probably my style is closer to. There's a lot of teaching in the preaching. Mm -hmm. A lot of teaching and the preaching, so you're just not, you know, what we call hooping or climaxing is is probably the, is the text textbook term, 
but but in the African American community, we call it hooping, you know. And so 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 T D Jakes does a lot of teaching prior to his hooping. Uh, Cliff Low Dollar is just a teacher with a lot of climax. There's no hooping; it's just a climax. And and Charles Stanley is just a straight up teacher. And so I kind of admire all three of them. A lot, a lot. It, it's, it's a rarity that I do not use a story. Whether it was is is uh, a nonfiction or it, uh, a real life event, I, I use my own life a lot. Uh, uh, there are some stories like like if I want to if I'm teaching on uh, proper attitude, then I would share the story of the twin boys, you know, and that the the parents of the twin boys wanted to have them examined by a psychiatrist because one of them was an optimist, one of them was a pessimist. And so so, so they, they got this psychiatrist, he came up with this bright idea, okay, let's put both of them in a room. The optimist, they put them in a room full of cow manure, or just manure. And then in the, the pessimist, they put him in the room with the with the the prettiest truck that money could buy i mean it had colors that uh we can't even pronounce <laughs> and so so they went by to look to observe them and so they look in the pessimist room and he his countenance was down so they went into the room and they go son what's wrong and uh and the pessimist said it's the wrong color. So they go down to the optimist uh, twin boy room, and he's playing in the manure. So they run in there, son, what's wrong with you? Why are you playing in the manure? And he said to his parents, y'all can't fool me. There got to be a pony somewhere around here. So, so stories of, of, uh, plays a big part in, in my teaching and preaching. When I was incarcerated, we were celebrating Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday, and they asked me to give a speech. And I think that 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 I probably would would uh, rank that one as probably one that I felt was one of my best. And and I think that because I I, I connected with uh, Martin Luther King and 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 I I understood more of, of what it means to, to, to not have some of the privileges that we take for granted, you know, and so, so that was a connection there, and I think that that, that speech in, in, uh, really went well, yeah. I, I probably would say find a way to connect to it because you know, if you don't connect to it, then you're not going to be able to communicate it on a level where people are going to want to gr uh, grab hold to it. Mm -hmm. So you have to find a way to connect to it. You have to find a way. You have to be like the twin boy, the mm -hmm. optimist. You have to find a way to connect to it. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would say, you know, and, and, I, and I think that, that uh, there probably have been times that I didn't want to uh, speak about a certain issue, but because I had to speak on a certain issue, then I looked and prayed about a way to connect to it. In 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 well, when I'm when I'm when I'm teaching and preaching, you know, you know, that's no. But when I'm just teaching, like in a, in a like in a Wednesday night Bible study or Sunday school, then then one of the things I try to do is is to draw the uh, uh, the audience into what what I'm uh, uh, sharing with them is that I I ask questions, you know, or I make statements that's dogmatic, mm -hmm. and. And then would we'll say, okay, well, how many of you agree with me? You know, and then I make them kind of 
you, you just have to know your subject. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, you know, you have to know the pros and cons of it. Mm -hmm. You know, and and just do your best and don't be afraid to say hey, I'm not qualified to answer that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you could respond to it, then respond to it. I mean, you know, uh, 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 appreciate the challenge because it 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 helps develop you because that won't be the last time where you will have to respond to a, uh, a hostile uh, question. So so I say you know um, you know just 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 appreciate it and do your best. Mm -hmm. And you want them to you know to ask those questions if you're really trying to uh, gather information. So, so I, I don't, you know, uh, uh, we had a uh, pastor that, that was doing a revival for us. And so he did, he used PowerPoint. But, 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 what, uh, but what he did that I, I didn't appreciate was is that he felt like in order for him to use the PowerPoint, he had to downplay other techniques. And so you don't have to do that. So whatever your style or your technique is, then just do you. You know, you don't have to tear other techniques down because there's no one technique for effective communication. So, but the but the but the 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 the, the best thing that you could do for yourself and for your audience is that you have to be you. Yeah. And so if you're gonna use PowerPoints, if you're gonna use a different method, then just just do that. Speaking too long, <laughs> you know, I, I, you know, sometimes you know you feel like you're not reaching your audience, and then so there's the temptation to to stay at it, and so uh, uh, I I would say that's number one. Number two, uh, don't try to uh, 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 at at the genesis of your speech try to manipulate the audience. For instance, uh, some speakers will come in and they'll see two people over here, two people over here, and they're comfortable. So when when you go in and you say, "Well, I would need everybody right to move right here in the center," then all of a sudden they, you know, they, you're gonna get one of these numbers. Like, okay, say what you want to say, but I'm not really feeling you. I was comfortable where I was at, and so and I think that's 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 important. Is that the people have to remain comfortable. You know, so so you, you don't start off trying to manipulate them. So have some passion, passion about what you are trying to communicate. Yeah, that's why I say you have to connect to it. You have to feel it. Yeah. So and and uh, so now I don't sing. So so. Um, if I did, I wouldn't have a congregation. <laughs> and 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 if I'm out doing public speaking, they wouldn't stay there alone. And so, but 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 what we for uh, ministers that cannot sing, then we have the choirs. They most likely will sing a song before we get up and speak. Yeah. So, so music is is very important. Yeah, in public speaking, and. And uh, and some pastors have have moved to while they're even teaching and preaching, they have the music real soft in the background. Now I I have I really appreciate that. I it's it, it's just not a good fit for the the traditional type of church that I pastored. But 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 I I when I um, uh, hear a pastor. Teaching and preaching, and they and they have this real, I mean, real soft music in the background. Wow, I mean, it's just so soothing. It's just, yeah, phenomenal. Right, and and they call it textbook preaching. You know, you start off real low and soft, and as you progress towards the end, the energy, you know, begin to flow. And so by the time you get, you know, 
to the, the last part of it, you're at a real high note. I, you know, like I said, through prayer, you know, I'd sit down and I'd make sure that I got that introduction down. And so, so I don't even have to really look uh, 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 pay attention to my manuscript in the introduction. And the conclusion, same way. So, so now, you know, the adrenaline is, 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 is really flowing. And so now, you know, I can't really stay glued on the manuscript. So now, and, and that's more extemporaneous there. So, yeah. So, so there's, there's some things that I know that I, I'm going to say, but then after that, who knows? <laughs>